We are live on Facebook, the group Facebook page, Instagram, and YouTube. As you can see, I'm here by myself. Uh, AP, I was waiting on her, but she's stuck in traffic. Therefore, it's just a little old me. So uh, we're going to still make this happen. Going to go a little different tonight, unfortunately, because I can't really read the questions. Well, I can, but it won't go as smooth. But she's coming. She's on her way. So we're going to get it in. It's going to go a lot smoother once she gets in the house. But I wanted to get this in. Um, I try to make sure my whole day is pretty much planned around this, even though I have to do other things. But I try to um, try to get this in because I think think it helps a lot of individuals on their journey trying to do this real estate thing. Um, I'm always trying to find ways to um, to market the biz. And um, wow, I put that on there. It didn't even bear with me, guy. I'm trying to do this, do this solo. So, but uh, I'm always trying to find ways to generate leads, and I always talk about um, uh, if you'll notice the seller side of it, finding a great deal more than anything. And so, I have a little experiment that I'm doing right now that I'm not going to share yet because I don't have any results from it. But the point of me even bringing this up is that, is that um, obviously, you know, I preach a lot about bandit signs. I preach a lot about uh, direct mail. Uh, I have even the flip by phone thing and, and deal you later, all of that. Uh, and it's all predicated around generating leads to uh, try to make it or reduce the frustration of actually doing deals. Um, and hopefully you get it, but I think the biggest struggle that I see, because I get text messages and calls, uh, the comments on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, which I appreciate everyone that uh, follows me and think I have something to, to add as far as value, but it seems to be a huge struggle on what's a deal and what's not a deal. Uh, that seems to be the, the biggest struggle for most people. And so what I want to do is, while we're waiting on Adrian, hope she'll get here in the next 10 or 15 minutes, is that I want to focus on uh, what truly is a deal, in my opinion, which I'm going to normally be pretty conservative on the numbers because you have to be in order to uh, have buyers attracted to your actual deals. So it all starts with you, you, you're going to always backdoor backdoor the deal and what i mean by that is is that you have to know what the property would be worth in excellent condition meaning what will it appraise for before you can even start to think about it if you have an opportunity i get calls all the time and and, and guys don't think that i'm being rude when i refer you to my videos or to the youtube page but i can just tell from your question that you may have only watched a few videos and I, I just know you're not taking advantage of what's free. Um, again, I appreciate everyone that follows my stuff. But if, if you can't afford the coaching and stuff, then take advantage of what's free. I know that's what I would do. If, if I would have found someone like me 15 plus years ago, I would have I wouldn't known what I would have been. Oh, my God. Matter of fact, I found a video just to not really get off track. But I found a, a video, a set of videos from this guy. Uh, a man that reminded me of a lot of the things that I do and how I go about it because he gives away so much good content about the business that he's in. And um, I just dove into it, you know, in I just dove into I was up at, at 1 32 in the morning last night just because I couldn't stop watching his videos. And uh, he, he doesn't have as many as I have or whatever, but the videos are pretty lengthy and they're detailed. He, he's great at explaining what he means, but. And so I'm saying that to say is that 
it's very few topics. Well, I, well, it seems that way. It seems there's very few topics that you can't find a a mountain of information about. And so um, now I may buy this guy course because I can afford it. It's only like one ninety seven. But if I couldn't afford the course, I would just run with those videos and I would do more research to try to fill in the holes. But I'm saying this, um, I get a lot of calls from people and, and text messages and they want to present me to did, they want me to partner with them and everything. And I'm not turning down any money. And, and again, I don't think I'm being rude when I, 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 I push you toward my videos or the Facebook group or whatever. It's because for whatever reason, I, I don't know, I, I guess I'm not doing a good job. Uh, of the, all the free content that I have out there or people just not watching it or the way I'm explaining it and others are explaining. But it's very, it seems to be very difficult for people to understand what is a great deal or not. And a lot of times I know it's just excitement because the seller has actually given you some time. But understand that a lot of people want to sell properties. And, you know, a lot of properties are for sale. You know, that, uh, you know, yeah, they're going to talk to you because they're trying to sell their property. But the, one of the reasons that you have to generate a lot of leads because the majority of the people that are, are willing to sell a piece of real estate want more than what will make sense for you as a wholesaler. So that's why it's so important to understand what a deal is. Now, it's not always just as cut as dry as the 70% times uh, ARV minus repairs and your fee because sometimes it's perception within a particular mark, area of your market and you won't know until you test the waters with buyers because you can have one, a, a D area in your market and another D as in, I'm saying D as in dog, uh, in your area. And they'll buy up one area and they won't buy up the other area, you know, but they're the same area. Just to sort of give you a visual, I would mean, normally these are the neighborhoods that are on the news every night, all right? And you'll have investors that are love one part of the same type neighborhood, but uh, but you can't, you can't control how people spend their money. So, when you start talking about the pharmacy, then in one area, they still may buy in the area that they're not as, as high on, but the, the the value, what they'll buy in that area, meaning what they'll spend may be considerably lower. So the formula, and as I always say, is not just cut and dry. It's more to prevent you from wasting time than for newbies, really to prevent you from wasting time. A lot of people contact me and say, um, I got this property, um, um, the numbers are this, blah, 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 and, and I'll ask them, well, what's the ARV? Well, I hadn't looked that up yet. <laughs> you, don't, you don't waste even much time on it until you've done that. Uh, and and uh, I have the, probably one of the better videos that I have is top three ways to calculate ARV. And well, anytime you want to do a search for my videos, which I don't have a title on everything, but for the most part, I do. You can always just put Flip Man behind it. It's going to pull up my video, all right, or, uh, or a set of my videos that are related to that particular title. And people like the title search, and I get it. They want to try to get it all in one day or whatever. In most cases, it's, it's not that simple. And so, uh, again, if you can't afford coaching from me or whoever, my channel offers you everything that you need. You just need to take the time to go through it. Um, just knowing when I was, I had a four nine, a four time nine to five, but the mountain of content that I have, it probably, the way I would have done it, I know everybody's schedule is, is different. I would have listened to that just pretty much all my free time or the majority, at least half of it, let me just say that. So it will probably take me, mm, may, maybe, see the flipping is over an hour, so those are gonna be a little different, but it's still valuable information there probably about two months or whatever, if I was really on it. So, you know, some people want, hey, screw that. I want I want the information now. But if you can't afford the other stuff, then take advantage of what's free. It's all there. I have testimonial after testimonial of non-students that I've never talked to before they reached out to me. There were just a couple of questions about my courses and stuff, but they just took the free videos and made money. I have a, quite a few of those there of people, just real people like all of us that are just taking that free information around with it. So back to what's the deal, what's not a deal, I'm rambling here. But what, what is a deal? All right. First, you have to determine what the ARV is. Again, don't confuse ARV with what the repair cost is. 
after repair value. What will the house be worth once it's fixed up? Okay. All right, so once you establish that number, again, the video that you can relate to is top three ways to calculate A or B, or you can just get start your free trial with digulator.com. Right now, I don't really want to quote the cost because uh, it'll, it'll change at some point, but it's cheap. <laughs> it is cheap. A couple of bucks a day, basically. So uh, and get once you have that value, now you can plug in the, the, the formula that a lot of us people that teach this or promote this online. You take 70% times that amount. So we'll just use $100,000 for the sake of easy numbers. So 70% times $100,000 is $70,000. Okay, so what does that really represent? All right, 70 plus 30 equals 100. So the 30% is really the focus. The 30% 30% represents uh, your cash buyers, because you have to think in those terms, their potential profit and their holding costs. So their profit, it can be easily between 20 to 25%, and their whole holding costs can range between five and 10%. All right, so that represents the entire 30% right there. So the other 70%, that's where you're gonna have your repair costs built into the purchase and also your fee, you know? So, but you have to take those out of that amount. So we're at $70,000. We took the 70 times, 70%, times a hundred thousand at least seventy thousand dollars well we'll just for the sake of argument say the repairs on this property is twenty five thousand dollars so you subtract twenty five thousand from seventy thousand and that leaves what forty five thousand all right so now you say well hmm i want to make at least ten thousand on this property so i normally i'm going to double that fee uh so just for negotiating purposes so subtract twenty thousand out of ten thousand subtract 20,000 because you double the 10,000, which you, is your projected fee. So now you have 25,000. You say, well, Tyron, who in the world would sell me a property that's potentially worth $100,000 for 25,000? Well, the term that you often hear is a motivated seller. They're motivated to sell for whatever reason. The house can need too many repairs. It could be going through a divorce, which I throw that up first. I don't know why. Um, normally first. Uh, it can be a tired landlord. It can be an inherited property, which normally means probate or whatever. It could be um, an out-of-town owner. It could be someone that uh, has lost their job or income has been reduced. Someone with some uh, tremendous medical bills or unexpected medical bills, and they need to li liquidate an asset quickly. And the only way they liquidate it quickly is to sell it really cheap. It could be a... It could be a... Um, a student, uh, a, a, a child or a grandchild that needs tuition paid um, for college or high school, elementary or whatever. So uh, basically what I'm saying is that life will dictate motivated sellers, just everyday life. But some people, well, people say, well, there's a lot of competition here. It doesn't work here. The houses are too much here. People are very sad. All of those problems that I named, I don't care what income levels we're talking about, they exist. Death, divorce, job loss, uh, unpaid taxes, medical issues, tuition, relocation, out-of-town owners, that exist everywhere. Now, the larger the market, obviously, the more opportunities are going to present themselves. I'm, the, the market that I'm in is Birmingham, Alabama, between 1.1, 1.2 million Metro. Now, just the city of Birmingham is only a couple, a couple hundred thousand, but if you consider the metropolitan area, which is what I work, you're talking about 1.1, 1.2. Some cities are obviously a lot bigger than that metro. metro. There's some cities a lot smaller than that. So uh, just understand it's a numbers game. The more people there, the more potential you're going to have motivated sellers in that market. Your job is to make sure you do an effective job of letting them know that you exist. If you do that, generating leads, keeping either your phone ringing and or ringing sellers' phones, you will do deals. When I don't do an effective job of that, this flip man character, <laughs> I don't do deals. So I'm not waving any magic wand or anything, but um, <laughs> hold on with my, my ace. Why, why, why are you getting out of the chat? 
Uh, we, um, well, I'm gonna let her take over then. I'm gonna, oh, I gotta go get uh, her uh, equipment. Oh, you can get it? Okay, well, whatever. All right, so, uh, so Adrian's gonna join, so we're gonna go a lot smoother. Y'all can quit, uh, keep me from rambling on. But I just wanted to go over what's a deal and what's not a deal. It starts there, guys. It starts with understanding what is a deal. Again, I know you get excited because a seller has talked to you. I get it. I get it. Even with my students that have been well trained, they can be very hyper. I had a student call me today. And I talked to her a little while ago before we started, to, before I was putting all this together. And uh, they're, they're on the verge of having a significant payday. And uh, next week, and I'm sure they're going to want to come on and share their story because it's been a struggle for them. And, uh, but it's going to be a really nice page that's going to change their situation and change it quickly. Um, so, but the reason I'm even bringing it up is that she, she tapped into me because we have to understand that she's fortunate because um, her, her husband uh, does contractor work. And so he understands what repairs, he just needs a generalization. Of it, so that go that goes a long way as far as figuring out whether there's there's a deal or not. So, so we're about to bring my um, man. That shirt looks good, man. I can I guess I can't get mine. Oh wow. Okay. Mm. So anyway, we're we're about to get Adrian on here so we can start the rock and roll for real. I know y'all guys are tired of me, so and uh, I was trying to trying to make a point here. So she's in the house. Am I late? And the record. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Ray, where you phone at? I'm good. How are you going to read this stuff? I got eyes. Okay, you can see there and there? Yeah. You can read it sideways? Yeah. I'm talking about here. Yeah. All right. Yes. Oh, you can see me. Oh, yes, I can. Uh -huh. All right, well. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, we we we, we ready. Did you read Dion Ephraim's question? I hadn't read nothing. I've just been rambling. Oh, you've just been talking. I've just been talking. Okay. So he wanted to know, who, how do I structure a deal when the homeowner says that their realtor is on file with her attorney as her selling agent? She wants to make sure her realtor gets paid, even though she's not involved in the transaction. Well, uh, that's up to her. Uh, if she, the, the seller is going to get a certain amount of money, so she'll she'll get paid the normal. The realtor just get paid, basically for doing nothing, you know. So that's that's on the seller. Just it's, it's just tied into the clothing, the uh, clothes, the HUD one, and the clothing uh, docs. That the set that the realtor is going to get paid X percentage of the uh, final sale price. Oh, that's kind of job. Almost. So she gonna get paid whether she not. In there at all. Girl, go get your phone. Why are you squinting? I ain't squinting. <laughs> well, she couldn't read. She don't have that on the phone anyway, normally, do you? See that? Yeah. See that? Uh huh. Okay. But what on the Facebook? You need to see this Facebook. Yes, yeah, that, that would just stuff me. So, Crystal Davis asked question. Did you answer Crystal's death question? I didn't ask any question. Oh, look. Wow. She always asked the first question. Come on, you got to get Crystal in there. What Crystal at? Crystal wanted to know about partnering with JVs because I guess being a part of the group, she's had a lot of people who have friended her in her inbox. So mm -hmm. I will find that one. She wanted to know basically how is that going to work with people being in other states? I think we get that question every week though. Um, I, I well, quote unquote a JV or co-wholesale uh, deal. The way I handle it, is that, and I'm normally going to be on the seller side of it. Now, if you're on the buyer side of it, uh, that's one thing. But I'm on the seller side of it. I'm just going to give them a price, or we'll, I'll tell them what I have it on the contract, and we'll just split split it. So they're going, but I'm still going to treat them like a buyer. I'm not going to do like a quote unquote JV contract or anything like that. I'm into purchase and sales agreements, so I can ensure that I can get paid, and they should be also to ensure that they get paid or whatever. So. Um, that's how I'm going to handle them. I'm always going to lock them in with purchase and sell degree, no matter what position I'm in. Mm, okay. You know, I'm going to act like a seller, I'm going to act like a buyer. I'm sorry, how are you doing? I'm good. 
Um, you like my shirt? Oh yeah, yeah. I wish yeah. I had one. Yeah. Mm, okay. Now that's big enough. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Okay, now that game looks that's a different gator. Yeah, it's a different gator. I had like three different gators. I did three different gators today. Oh, wow. Get <laughs> gator, y'all. Okay, so Josh got gator. He made his first deal. He closed his first deal on June 25th. He says, I appreciate your help, my man. I'm looking for my next one right now. You mean tell us how much you made though? Yeah, please tell us how much you made. How Josh? much was that check? How much was How much check? did you make? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey guys, and I've been seeing on the um the wholesaling with the flip man 13 000 plus members on the facebook group i've been seeing people posting their checks and it's been like one girl she had like 1780 1780 dollars another girl had 1006 and was like oh i know it's little i'm nothing little about that who who else is i mean think about if you were doing two three deals a week or heck even if you were doing one a week those aren't small checks guys I mean, don't i don't know what you're used to making or where you live i know some people make a lot more than that but don't belittle your checks. A check is a check is a check, and that cash is cash. Yes. Okay, so Reginald wants to know, how did you learn to use two contracts versus using an assignment agreement, and when was the first time you used it that way? Have you always done it that way? I, I was taught to do it that way, and the reason and the reason that it's done that way uh, is uh, you say, hey, I got a house um, on the contract. My assignment fee is $10,000. They're going to negotiate $10,000. Don't expect them to pay that. Now, you don't have to accept it, but it's been it boils down to nego negotiations like most businesses. Um, but using that same scenario, okay, say that, oh, let's go let's back. Let's say you had the property on the contract for $50,000 and you say my assignment fee is $10,000. So they're going to negotiate your $10,000. But if I had a property on the contract for $50,000 and I'm um, um, marketing my contract, other contract that will just say seventy five thousand, and he comes back and says, "Hey, I can do sixty nine thousand." So now I made nineteen thousand because he still thought he got a great deal because he got a six thousand dollar discount that made it uh, satisfied him. So they don't know. The point is, is that they will know, but or can know, but they don't know what I'm making. They're just negotiating a price, and that price fits into. What they what they think the repairs are, how much money they think, and what their risk reward is on the property. That's why it's done is to you negotiate a price, not my fee, not normally ne negotiating my fee. So that's why two purchase and sales agreements are used. Okay, and guys, we're talking about that one page contract that is available to each and every one of you on Flipman.net. Or text contract at 313131. It's the one page contract that, as you just said, he's been using for years and it works. Okay, so going back to Mr. Ephraim's question, it was uh, her, I can't tell. Now that I can't see Crystal. You're right. Um, but he wanted clarification. He says, so once he puts the property under contract and it sells, is he possibly going to face any trouble with her realtor? Like, does he need to put nah, it in If she gets paid, no. Okay, but does she get paid from him or does she get she paid from She gets paid the for who hired her, the seller. Okay. Now, you can negotiate with the realtor to make sure they get paid if it's going to be a deal breaker or whatever. But if that's the seller's, she she hired her. Dude, that's who needs to pay her. You know, she's concerned about the realtor. That's, that's who needs to pay her. Mm -hmm. Again, it's negotiable, but ideally, that's who needs to pay her. Hey, Eric. Sorry. Yeah, we did start like he has to go. Appreciate you. That's our movie quote, man. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you next time. Shanita Archie. This is from Facebook. Should I get a separate phone so that I have a dedicated voicemail or is it easy to keep things organized using one phone with the Google voice number? I can answer that one. Well, no, I would recommend Bumber uh, because you can get multiple numbers. You can get like eight numbers for like 30 bucks. And the reason I say multiple numbers is because you want a number for your for your uh uh band of signs. You want one for uh, if, you have, if you got for direct mail, mm -hmm. you want one for uh cold calling, you want one if you have uh, some uh, message on your vehicle. So you, you want to be able to track and see what's working, what's not working, so you can tweak to improve or get rid of or whatever. So you want to have multiple numbers. You can forward all of those numbers to one phone if you want, and they can they can ring. Uh, you, you can see those numbers come on your phone differently if you download the uh, Bumper app. Okay, 
which means you need a smartphone. You're kidding yourself if you don't have a smartphone. Um, they're too inexpensive. Hmm. It's basically like being a, well, you are toting, you're, you're literally toting around a, a PC or a laptop with a smartphone, you know, one of the greatest inventions of the man. Combine this with the internet, a lot of power here, a lot of power. Just curious, just just want to stop you right there. I stated that I would answer that question, and you just didn't even. Go ahead, you got it. it. No, it's too late. You've already done. I well, just you, wanted, I just you were going to you were going to say Google Voice, though, I know, right? But I was just I was just pointing out that you didn't even give me the opportunity. Okay. What is Renikia when I need her? What is Renikia? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. What's the name of the app? Bumber, like. Um. Uh, Biz and Victor. Biz and Victor. Yeah, what he said. Biz and Victor. Umber. Like a lumber, like yeah, lumber. Like, like, num like number. Number, but number. lumber. Yeah, Voicemail lumber. number jazzed together. Yeah. Yeah. Lumber. Lumber. Yeah, that's, okay, I see what you did there. Okay, so Malik Abdullah says, I got a possible deal. House needs a lot of work, but area is more renters than homeowners. Repairs is more than price. Deal or no deal? No deal. Stay an answer before you said. He said, "What was more than what?" He says the repairs are more than the price. <laughs> but he, no, 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 no. What's the he said, "Right." He didn't say that. So he's just saying yeah. the repairs are more than what they're asking for. But not necessarily. You got to give them a little bit more information, Malik. Um, yeah. Need to know how much are the repairs? How much are you negotiating for the home to put under contract? And what is the ARV of your property? So give us that information, and we'll be able to tell you deal or no deal. And let's see here, going straight on with Dayon Jackson. He's in the Chicago market. This is from YouTube. He says, I have a place. ARV is 20, no, I'm sorry, 220,000. And seller wants 120K and repairs are 45, 50. So we'll say 50. He offered 60. Haven't heard anything back yet. Did I calculate right? Well, what's the numbers again? 120 is what they were asking for. He offered 60. What's the ARB? 220. Repairs 50. Yeah, you offer right. <laughs> yeah, you offer right. Um, yeah, that's a good. Hey, they accept that 60. Man, that would be a, uh, three home runs. But uh, you, you probably don't have to be that low. The ARV is 220. Um, mm -hmm. What did you say the repairs were? 50. 50, 50K? Yes. Times seventy. That's times two twenty times seven is fifty thousand. I'm sorry, one hundred <laughs> one hundred and fifty four thousand minus fifty thousand is one hundred four, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't have to be at sixty. I'm not sure how he came up with that unless he wants to make thirty grand. Well, uh, probably want to make thirty. Okay, so um, <laughs> so he would just say you want to make twenty grand. So you know, if you got it around eighty, you'll be good. You'll you'll be smoking on that one. So since you haven't heard anything back from me, you can reach back out and be like, Oh, he's already made an offer of 60. Yes, and he hasn't heard anything. I wonder why. Yeah, you lowballed him. If you were embarrassed <laughs> to say that, you did a good job. Yeah, yeah. You did a very good I job. I wonder why. But you can also call back and be and say, you know, I offered you sixty thousand. What what would you want? What how close to that can you come? You know, yeah. what's the least mm -hmm. amount that you can take? And if you can get him to come to eighty, then you still have a deal. So Malik, I hope, um, I'm sorry, that was actually Dayon. Mr. Jackson, I hope you heard that. On Instagram, um, our subscriber says, I've been sending out 100 mailers a week. Yeah, you can't see that, can you? No, but I can. And I'm not squinting, Crystal. Okay, um, 100 mailers a week, um, but not getting any responses. What am I doing wrong? Guys, before he answers, stop thinking you're doing something wrong. You're, you're not as long any action is good action. Now you could probably send out more or the area well, you're targeting, but you're not doing anything wrong per se because you're doing something, right? And who is he mailing them to? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that makes it who are you mailing them to? All right. What are you mailing? Uh, hopefully, you're mailing these bad boys, mail to flip, picture mm -hmm. of the owner's property on the on the uh, on the mailer, either with a uh, actual postcard mm -hmm. or a letter. See the picture there? That's the owner's property. Mm -hmm. Somebody's. Who is this that's sending a picture of my house 
Yeah, but one every four of those won't get cussed out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's good. All right, they make it easier for you. They cuss you out and make it easier. Mark them off the list. Or you may want to mail them again. <laughs> okay, so we need to know. I can't. No, I can't read the name. It's something 1982. We need to know who you are sending them to. What? Who are you targeting with your mailers? And that may make a difference of why you're not getting a, a response there. Um, Okay, next question. This is still from Instagram. Is there any way to receive 100% funding on buying whole properties, um, duplexes? You're not going to get 100% from anywhere, right? They, you don't have to bring something. Well, well, like what Renika has got funded, that's possible, but she wouldn't recommend it doing that way because you got to have an exit plan to be able to cash what you borrowed out. Um, it, it's hard. You can do a hundred as far as getting funding from an actual lender, whether private or whatever, or hard money, hard money. No private, maybe they probably end up being a partner of yours in that transaction. Um, but, um, probably the only way you're going to get a hundred percent funding is if someone owner financed the property for you or a portion of it, you know, it may be possible, but traditional lending won't let you do it that way without you putting some skin in the game, a private lender may do it, uh, depending on what type of relationship you build, where the owner may finance, where the private lender may give you 70, 80% of the purchase of the property and the owner may hold a second for the difference. So that's a possibility, or if you can get the owner to owner finance the entire amount to you. Okay, so I'm going back to Malik's question. His question was on YouTube. Um, the ARV for the property, um was that he said the repairs were more than the price was 55 um is for 20,000 is the best that you can do he countered for 10 and then 25,000 for the repairs it's more rentals than flips in that area and he's wanting to know would you pass a grab so 25,000 for repairs and he offered 10 so that's 35 um and you're sitting at what is ARP 55 so 35? Yes. Um, yeah, that's going to be tight. Um, say 25 in repairs? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's going to be tight to make money off. You make it find an investor that wants to um, do a buy and hold there. You may pick up a couple of grand on it, but normally that's going to be tight. But you know, if they can get it for 12 or 13, put 20, that may, that may be possible. I would give it a run. Um, you know, put some bandit signs out in the area. House for sale cheap. $14,000 in your phone number, uh, something like that, handwritten, and um, you know, see what happens. Or And or, in that area, dailylater.com, see what cash buyers have purchased in that area, create your phone list from, which I have a video on that, hit them up, mm-hmm. let's see. Jeremy Langford. Um, and plus with that, you can see what they're actually paying for properties really close to it. So you'll see what they're paying cash for those properties, that give, give you a good idea if you may have an opportunity or not. Jeremy Langford actually said, deal you later is the truth. Thank you, big homie, for all you're doing. It helps a lot. So right. we have a yes, deal you later user there. Okay. Hey, guys, if you have not gone to dealyoulater.com where you can get Gator with it, um, go there, sign up. As a, I know. I signed this up. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's a free five-day trial. And then after that, it is a subscription. Um, you do have to pay a monthly subscription fee for it. And there are some um, pay-per-use uh, services within it as well. But once you go and look at it and do the trial, I think you would will, will agree that it's probably a good $7.99 to spend every month. If you're spending $8, $10 on Netflix and you ain't even watching that, so cancel that. And then get Dilly later instead, and then go get Gator and make you some money. Then we'll put Netflix back on, but it, it will help you guys. So DillyLater.com. Um, and Elizabeth, I think it was John Lewis. You say you're trying hard. Keep working on it. Yes, she says I'm so happy to be a part of this team. Although I didn't get the deal, I still have been taking action. Made my first offer today, and I'm just excited. My journey has officially started. Way to go, Elizabeth. Glad to hear that. And Rodney, 2002 is Bumber. Bumber. Voicemail and number put together. Take the V as in Victor, U M B R. Um, Robert Thompson, you're welcome. And Tremaine, hey. But Kim, I see you envy me on Facebook has a question. She says, What skip tracing site 
No, I'm sorry. Actually, her question is, I'm new to this life. How can I flip houses without using my own money? Yes, you are new, Kim, but we welcome you here and we're glad you joined us today. Um, because that is kind of a newbie question, we appreciate you asking that, but I would suggest that you begin digging into... Um, well, well, I'd like to explain it to her, but go ahead. You question. can explain it, but I'm also... She's new, so I got to tell her about the 270 plus videos that are available on YouTube in addition to the 13,000 plus members that we have on Wholesale with the Flipman Facebook group. He also has an ebook that is cost-friendly that can get you started <laughs> and um, explain a lot of um, questions that you may have. And then if, if you know all else fails and you're joining us on Thursdays, um, 7 p.m. What you say? Because I like that cost friendly. Yeah, it is cost yeah. friendly. It has to be cost yeah. friendly to the pockets. We ain't got that yet. We got no check. Anyway, so um, if all else fails, he does offer coaching services. But I would always suggest, as I do to anybody that posts a question about mentors, utilize all the free information that you get first. Um, so Kim has the question, how can I flip a house without using my money? Um, I see that. Yes, nineteen eighty-two. Yes, I got a question to answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I read the question. Okay. Um. Oh, how can you flip a house with no money? All right. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna give you just the, the 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 layman's version of it. All right. All real estate transactions start with a contract, a purchase and sales agreement. All right. Now that doesn't give you ownership, but it initiates the actual transaction of you actually buying the property. You as a wholesaler, it's a form of flipping, I guess you would say. Your goal is to find a great deal, lock it up on a contract for a certain number of days, normally 30 to 45 days. And in that time frame, you find a cash buy buyer that's eager to buy properties at a huge discount. For your efforts of finding that great deal, a lot of cash buyers are willing to pay you several thousand dollars and there's no cap on how much you can make depending on the property, where it is, condition, and how great of a deal you negotiated. So you have a property on the contract for $50,000 and you have a cash buyer that's willing to pay you $62,000 for the property. So you have two contracts in place, contract A with the seller for $50,000, contract B with the buyer for $62,000. Whenever you close on it, meaning you sit down with a title company and or close an attorney, you would get the difference between the two contracts, which is $12,000. Where the money comes from is the cash buyer brings the money to the closing table to close the actual transaction, normally where they pay all closing costs. It is negotiable. Sometimes you may have to participate in that, but in most cases, they pay it all. So that's how you can flip a house with no cash or credit. All right. So that's it. Yeah, you did good. You did good. I wasn't listening, but you did real good. I knew you. I agree. Okay. Sure. No, okay. no, I'm not. I'm going to Instagram. The Instagram question before it scrolled up was, how can I be positive that my ARVs are accurate, that my comps are accurate? Do you later dot com. Do you later dot com. Where you can get Gator and has all the information that you need as far as ARVs, estimated repairs. And you also have the ability to pin drop addresses and send out postcards right there on the spot. All the information that you need that is also available at your tax assessor is available right there at doyoulater.com. We have a free five day trial period that you're more than welcome to sign up for. We suggest that you sign up for it. And then after that is a small fee of- uh, And it's what? Do you later? Don't no, no, no. It's cost friendly. It's cost friendly. It's cost friendly. <laughs> All right. Cheaper than your subscription to Netflix. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. That was really good. You just, you just messed me up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm done. But yeah, done. she's saying basically you don't have to use Do You Later, obviously, but highly recommended it because it's going to automatically give you a value. But what it also, you don't have to just trust that. You can dig into the comparable sales because that's basically how you evaluate a property. You can see the proximity of recent sales to a property that you're targeting. That's the great thing about it. So digulated.com. Now I have a video uh, titled Top Three Ways to Calculate ARB. I just put Flip Man behind that. That's a pretty good video, but I'm gonna highly recommend using the free five-day trial to uh, just test it out, you know, and see if, uh, you can get the baggage that you're looking for, the information to be able to determine what the value of a property is. 
but that is very important. Mm -hmm. The projected value of the property, the ARV, what it will appraise for in excellent condition. Yeah, what it will appraise for in excellent condition. I know y'all get hung up on after repair value, but that's not, that is what that stands for. But what, what you need to think of in perfect condition, this is what it'll sell for. And you need to make sure that I guess I have to put a gate on my shirt since I don't have my shirt. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Like I really, it's safe. It's like real. It's salt water. Oh, that's salt, what that I don't know. It's fresh water gate. I don't know. Is that you, we know you don't know. We, hey, whatever. We, anyway. We, Okay, so what got a square, what's, go ahead. the alligator has a square mouth where the crocodile has a more rounded mouth. Thank okay. you very much. Right. The crocodile also known as a king. Somebody, some, somebody Google fact check that again. I'm right this time. Anyway, and don't encourage his foolishness on Instagram. I need to just scroll Instagram down that way because I'm going to like a question. Can you scroll? This way? No, the other way. Uh -huh. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah. It, it won't, it won't do nothing. See, those go so fast. Yeah. It was a really good question on Instagram. I just can't remember. Re re repeat your question on Instagram. Yes. And I will say, that, hey, Charles Jenkins said you explained all of that in one breath. Yes. And um, hey, Off-Roader, how you doing? Let's go to Catherine Weathersby. If a property is listed on MLS, what is the best method to get it under contract? Do I have to pay a commission to the realtor? Can you recommend one of your videos? I like your girl. Or on MLS properties. Is there a video for such? All right. Uh, so let's break the question down. What's the simple version of that? Just Can me. I put a house in a contract that's already listed on MLS to wholesale? And if so, do I have to pay the real to that fee? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why it's on MLS. They got to get paid. Uh, the, the sellers entrusted them to sell their property. It can be done. Just understand you're dealing with a realtor. So they have their personal financial interest involved. They can say whatever they want to say, but that's for they want to feed their family first. I'm doing a professional job for my uh, client, but yeah, right. But your your bills are first, <laughs> so keep that in mind. So you've just injected another person's finances or con uh, concerns about finances into the deal. All right, so you have to understand that first. Mm -hmm. All right, the next thing is they're going to want proof of funds, which is fine. You you can play that game with them. They're going to normally want a thousand dollars earnings money you can negotiate whatever you can do 250 500 or whatever but that's normally how they're going to play it so understand whenever you make an offer with an agent it's not like okay now properties that are listed on mls is not like their secrets so you're going to probably in most cases you're going to catch something really early and get on it boom that's rare or you negotiate it into a great deal all right then you're going to have the right type of buyer that's not hung up on something that's already being advertised so there are a lot of factors that are automatically in play when you're dealing with a property that's already listed on the MLS. But to answer your question, it can be done if you know what you're doing. And there's some other stuff, but just to answer your question, it can be done if you know what you're doing. It's just difficult. I know we all want the low-hanging fruit, which is something that's listed on MLS. But uh, again, if you got the right type of buyer, what I call lazy buyers, because they're inundated with uh, those properties from multiple realtors in, in most cases. So it's not like they're not aware of them, but you can always negotiate something into a great deal. Just understand all those other factors are in play when dealing with a real estate agent. So if you're cool with that and understand how to manipulate them before they manipulate you, you can do it. Okay. I'm going to go to Instagram before this question, and it is, I can't read that part. Okay, I have been putting up signs online. I have been putting, uh, yeah, I've been putting up signs online and on the street, and I get calls from other wholesalers, not sellers. Any advice? And the question before that was, what type of business is this? Okay, as far as the wholesaler question, um, I, I always have to ask, how many signs have you put up? Uh, if you're getting calls from there, that's fine, but it's not, obviously not who you're targeting. What do your signs say? Um, how simple are they? That factors in. But I would encourage you, without knowing how many signs you put up, if they're staying up, compound, do more. You, you will eventually start to get sellers to call your first. Wholesalers are just trained to see those signs, so that's why you're probably getting a response from them first. But uh, it still matters on how many signs you're putting up. So I would like to to know that information also, what does your message say on your signs? Mm -hmm. The other question, what type of business is this? This is a real estate business. 
you're a real estate investor. Mm -hmm. It's a form of real estate investing. It's a creative way of building, but you're a real estate investor. Yeah, real estate investor. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're in the real estate business. Mm -hmm. Kelsey Osley, love and support from Tuscaloosa to town, also known as Title Town, home of the champion Crimson Tide. Yay, Alabama, we're Crimson. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Roll tight. We're just going to leave it at that. Okay. And look at this guy. He says, I need dealy later signs to advertise in the back of my Uber. Mm, that's a good idea. What they said? He said he need dealy later signs to advertise in the back of my Uber. Where where, where are you? Gary Vaughn, you done sparked his little interest. Where yeah, you I'm at? You'll have yeah. a sign tomorrow. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, yeah, Gary, um, uh, reach, out, reach out to me, Gary. Text me. I got. I want to ask you some stuff about that. Go ahead, in Gary. particular. Okay, so next question. We're gonna go to Facebook, and it's gonna be Krishanda Chris, Foreman. She wants to know: Is there a certain way to post the properties that you have for sale on social media? Example: Can I say house for sale? I was told that I couldn't. All right. Um, what uh you mean like when they're trying to advertise the property mm -hmm. country? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's that's a gray area, or whatever. Um if you're not comfortable with it, you can always just say you have a contract available on the property, contract for sale. You, know, you can do that, you know. So if you're uncomfortable with putting it out there, I'm not sure who you're listening to, but you know. They go there again. So they uh but I say the haters elevate you. Yeah, the mm -hmm. haters elevate. Oh yes, the haters. We didn't put that on the show. Yeah. They are wrong. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Typically they're wrong. Okay. So, Ophelia, Mr. Flipman, I tried the method of doing two purchase of sale agreements rather than using an assignment for my end buyer. And I was asked by my title company if I could get an assignment between myself and the end buyer because if I don't, they will have to do a deed from the original owner to myself and then another deed from myself to the end buyer, which extra fees for deed prep will have added. Um, have you ever run into that? And if so, did you just tell them to take the extra fee expense out of your fee? Uh Two ways you could do it. You can just let them take the extra fee up there if you have to uh, uh, take title to make the transaction happen. But I would have just told them, why not just uh, you all create whatever assignment contract that you all are comfortable with, meaning the title company, just let me sign it at closing. It's that simple. I've done that before, you know, where the attorney just feels like he needs that paperwork in place. Most of the time they don't care. Or whatever, from my experience. So if, if, so they just, just having them to create the, Assignment contract at closing, you sign it right there, you know, so, and it'll be in the verbiage that they're comfortable with. Okay. Francesco, artister, sounds like he has a deal. Guys, this might be something that we're looking for. He's over here on YouTube. It says, I'm new to this stream, so welcome, Francesco. Um, I have a guy that's listing his house for 10-8, 10,800, in a market that houses have ARVs from 80 to 120. It needs thirty thousand dollars in repairs. How do I capitalize on this and not screw up? Has right. a lot of wiggle room in there, so maybe not being too greedy and making sure he leaves a lot of room for the buyer too, right? So yeah. So what's the, what's the what's the number? What are the numbers? We're just gonna say eleven under contract for eleven. Thirty thousand in repairs, so forty one, and we'll take a mid air because that's a big spread. He says from eighty to one twenty. Yeah, so we'll just say what ninety five. Ninety five. Yeah. So, so forty one and then yeah, that's 95. a yeah, that's a deal. Yeah, you got it for eleven. Yeah. Yeah, that's that that should be a deal. Mm -hmm. But he wants to know how to capitalize. Like, what would he put it out there for? Oh, I would probably put it out there at uh, you said ninety five. Mm -hmm. I would probably put it out there at um, you got it for eleven. I'm sorry, you got it for eleven. Eleven thirty thousand. Okay. Yeah, I would probably put it out there at twenty five. Twenty five. Mm -hmm. I still, Francesco. Yeah, I'll probably put it out there at 25, yeah. Okay. Um, Crystal, that's my biggest thing in right there. Mm -hmm. She says, how do you explain to the seller they owe taxes and that is factored into the price? We do that minus all taxes and liens, right? When you do your contract, right? What's that? What's the question? How do you explain to the seller that they owe taxes and that is factored into the price? Well, most people know that they pay property taxes because they've already been paying them. 
right? So it's normally not an issue, but you know, it's, you just explained. We again, that's still negotiable. Sometimes I've paid the taxes or a portion of the taxes to make the deal work. If I'm making, you know, satisfaction money for me. So, but normally um, you pay all closing costs minus any unpaid tax and mortgages or lien. They they know all of that's theirs. The taxes are theirs that they should have been paid. The unpaid mortgage balance if there's one or any liens if there are any liens. That those are all on them. So it comes out of their proceeds. Again, anything can be negotiated, you know, but normally they're gonna pay pay those. I'm just gonna post this just because she said it. You wanna read that one? What? That that last one. I am. Okay, all right, all right. No, read see. all of it. Oh, uh, yes, I am. I love Adrian. I, I read that. Yeah. But you okay. didn't say it out loud for them. He oh, tried, okay. Yeah, he just tried to skip over. Oh, okay, it. yeah. So, all right, Chris. See, it's not all about you. I see. Yeah, uh, okay, Chris. Well, I just. I have a fan base. Why you sit, on, sit, sit outside? Sit on, <laughs> sit on <laughs> let, 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 let it rip. Yeah, just. Nah, mm -mm, that's okay. Okay, so let's see here. The seller knows they owe back taxes. They play dumb, though, sometimes. That is true. That is on Instagram. And should I buy a property with a quick claim deed? Why do you like quick claim deeds so good? Because it just sound good. Okay. Let me understand what they said. She wants to know, or he wants to know, should I buy a property with a quick claim deed? Uh, I would. <laughs> I would. Um, it's, it's hard to... Uh, hard to get title insurance. You don't ever want to buy a prop, in my opinion, buy a property without being able to get title insurance. You want true ownership. If you're spending money, you want true ownership. And if it's supposed to be in an ownership, you know, the seller's out of the transaction. Because with just a quick claim deed, now if you run title and you're comfortable that they own it and they quick claim deed, okay, roll with it. You know, that that's on you. It's just something I wouldn't do. Um, just telling you, I, I want a warranty deed, you know, most states operate that way, and I want title insurance, which means the title company is going to back up saying, hey, we said that this title is clear because you did this, this, or that, and we'll back it up if anything shows up in the future. You know, that's what you want. I, I recommend that anyone does. So, Okay. Um, I like clean titles. Don't we all? Everybody loves clean titles. <laughs> yes, that should, that should be uh, that should that could be a slogan. I like clean titles. Mm. <laughs> Never mind that. It looks like something else. Okay, so Stefan Moore says we got our deal. You later, ready to go, Stefan. Appreciate you uh, uh, signing up for that app. Let's see here, Doctor Thrive. Hello, is it better to have a? Are you listening to me? Yeah, go ahead. Hello, is it better to have a local number or a toll-free number? When cold calling, I'm wondering if my 1-800 number stops people from answering the phone. Um, I want, using a 1-800 number? Yes. Yeah, uh, it's tough. I just recently tried it out a couple of years back, and uh, I promoted it. I hate I did, um, and I actually made some money from it, but the local number just dwarfed it. You know, and it was so expensive the way I was trying to do it also with a vanity number. So you see that old video, I don't, you know, I don't do that anymore. It's just a local number, just, just outperformed at 10 to 1, you know, so that's, that's nothing to think about. Nothing to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, people prefer to see local numbers because they don't know who it is. You're more likely to answer it is the, the doctor's office, is the kids calling, or the kids calling from somewhere, is a place of business locally. That 1 800 number, I'll make the bill collector. Uh, telemarketer, somebody I don't want to talk to. So yeah, that, that could be an issue for you, Dr. Thrive. Jay Turner, I recently got a real estate license before I found your channel. What precautions do I need to take so that I'm not violating any laws? Well, from my understanding, normally you just have to disclose that you're an agent whenever you're doing stuff on your personal behalf. Okay, so it's more about disclosure, disclosure, a disclosure clause. But yeah, you, Jay, you might want to make sure you talk to your broker, whoever oh, um, your what? Uh, they 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 hit me up earlier today. They wanted me to ask this question here. So, so that's what y'all do. I skip all no, 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 questions. We don't want to be a habit of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. They just bypass me. Okay. <laughs> 
Mm. I'll read it this time. Crystal Davis, I'll be looking for it. I have a potential deal here in Waymar, Texas. It's near Houston. Problem is they're an absentee owner with the only key to the vacant property. No nearby relative with a backup. So without being able to see inside, I don't think I can make a proper offer. Can you make a comment on tonight flipping on how to handle this if it's not any trouble? Also, oh, I actually saw that over there. Mm. The elderly owner is on Medicare and selling the house, and this may affect her fixed monthly income. What can we do? First of all, there's no key. Can't they just send some type of written permission and get like a locksmith on? Yeah, a, a kick door. That's what they call a kick door. Kick dogs. Don't pull no kick dogs. Yeah. No, don't. Like them, can you just go into it? Give them, give you, they need the verbal. A verbal will be good enough for me. Can I get in it? And, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If they're out of town and boarded up, yeah, just, I'm not going to tell you to do that. No, no, because you got the nosy there. neighbors that are like, hey, yeah. what you doing over there? And so, you know, if somebody pulls up, if you can say, hey, I got permission. This is all yeah. the call. Yeah. I'm doing what I'm something. supposed to be doing. Yeah, if you need them to email you some or fax mm -hmm. you over some saying, you know, hey, it's okay to enter this property uh, within reason and, um, you know, roll with it. Because um, at the end of the day, your buyers are going to want to get in it also. So, right, you're gonna yeah. have to get in it one way or another. Yeah. So, they can either mail you that single key and well, you can make uh, well, a copy and, and send it and, back. It shouldn't have to be a say, why can't they make a copy and send it to yeah. you? Yeah, are they motivated? Yeah, this goes back to the question are you really dealing with the motivated seller? Because if I is whatever is vacant and I'm not there, I see your key, no big deal, just give me some money, help, help me move this. Mm -hmm. um, so just consider all of that. Now, what about the part about selling it and she's elderly and it affecting her Medicare income? You, that, that shouldn't affect that. Shouldn't that shouldn't affect that. that. That's oh. sell real estate. Um, I, I'm not, you know, if you can ask a CPA or whatever, you know, but I, I, I don't know. I can imagine that being a, a factor. Um, you own real estate. You should be able to sell it. If you pay taxes on whatever you get. It's, it's just that simple. Ah, uh, Robin Taylor. Oh, that's too low. Yeah, volume is a little low in the whole selling group. Okay. Don't uh, you do it. Don't mess up nothing. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, as loud as it's going to go. Yeah. As loud as it's going to go. Maybe I'm too far away. I need to speak to my. I should be picking up. I don't know. Well, there's no Robin. That is as it's loud as it. Yeah, Yana, who's annoying? Me? What? What am I deleted? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, so let's see here. Oh, that's when I said I was the favorite. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all don't do time like that. No. Mm -mm. No, he left time. Okay, Darnell Bay. Uh -huh, it's Bay. Um, said touch on so and how to properly fill them out while doing a walkthrough. Y'all do that? Say what now? Who wants to know, touch on a soul and how to properly fill one out while doing a walkthrough. What is a soul? Well, for independent contractors, it's like an agreement of sometimes sign of work, um, signature of work, uh, something like that, I think is what it means. I'm not sure. We have to use Google. It's cool. I need some help with that on what that means. So, what does SOW mean? I think it's I think a signature of work, like a signing of work oh, when you're doing a walkthrough or something like that. They ain't got to come up. Well, they want to fill out, take the time out to fill out a document and break it all down. I just need a need an amount. Um, yeah. you know, it doesn't sound I like guess, well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me back, let me back, let me back. If this is your first time and you don't have any idea about repair yet, it would be probably best if they, uh, they uh, break everything down to you on paper. So now you can use that as somewhat as a uh, guide to figure out repairs in the future, even though houses would be different as far as statement of and, work. Okay, boom. Hey, Crystal, boy, be on it. Mm -hmm. Crystal, what, what city are you in? Where's she at? Why? I want to know because she might can replace you. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been a good, good night. And uh, are you serious? That, that hurt. You mad because she said, man? Oh, we are. Right. 
we didn't do that. That's so rude. Rude. No, statement of work is a so agreement. Like when you do like independent contract, like for the little phone companies, when you do telemarketing and okay. stuff, it's just stating how long you'll be, how long you're on the contract with them. So I guess um, they're talking about the contract. Okay. That, that's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see here. Look at that. She said, give him a name. That's my dog right there. Shanita Kenyatta wants me, Kenyatta, Kenyatta Belmar wants me to answer Shanita's question. Shanita on that particular screen right there is rolling up really fast. So I can't see it. Shanita, if you can hear me, please repost your question or Kenyatta repost her question, copy and paste it for me so I can make sure I read it before we close out, please. And let's see here. Crystal said, we're all the team. That's right. We're a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she basically saying, you can't boot me and replace me with her. Maybe if the price is right. Um, let's see here. We're going to go over to YouTube. How can I send my contract via email to a seller so they can sign it and send it back to me? What? How? How can they do what? How, how can I send my contract via email to a seller so they can sign it and send it back to me? Uh, scan it. Uh, take a picture of it with your phone. It's a lot of ways that you can do yeah, that. Yeah, you know, DocuSign, any of those electronic signature things, um, there's some ways you can maneuver it without doing that, but that's a simple way of doing it. Where they just a, a point and click deal at that point. But um, technology is wonderful. It's just a YouTube search away on how you want to do it, depending on how you want to do it. Okay, so there's like three questions on YouTube in regards to mobile homes. Does the contract work? Does your one-page contract work for mobile homes? And two, can you wholesale mobile homes? Now, what do you always tell them? Mobile homes, you have to think of them as a oh, car. Oh. Lose value as soon as you get yeah, pulled out. Yeah, they have tired of hand. If an yeah. agent might want to do a deal, you should give me the cash bill of sale. It's not my mobile home. Right. So you don't go through a, pro, a, a closing process like you do with a house so being able to put something on the contract really doesn't mean anything with mobile homes i had to learn the hard way on that um so you gotta have the right when i say the right type of buyer the right type of buyer hopefully no one lives in the mobile home because if the seller and the buyer ever meet there's a possibility you can get closed out and nothing you can do about it um so Traditional wholesaling, which normally means you're not using your own money, but with mobile homes, you may have to buy it first or someone partner with you to buy it and then flip it. But you have to be careful because of determining the value of a mobile home. They're like cars, you know, they depreciate every day that they're sitting there, you know. So, it, 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 so to answer your question, really, you can't wholesale like you do with a house as far as locking it up under an agreement because, again, if they got title on hand, you know, well, mobile homes, it's almost better to be able to pay cash for it yourself and then sell it later, right? Well, yeah, but that defeats the purpose of wholesaling. wholesaling. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Okay. Um, on Instagram, how do you find commercial buyers? Um, normally through uh, the, 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 the simple way to do it is through commercial brokers. Okay. Uh, and the great thing about commercial brokers um, you can call a commercial broker in California. They may be interested in a property in Tennessee or whatever, but they may have clients that are interested in properties in Tennessee. That's the great thing about it. Now, like with anything, you may have to call, call quite a few of them to get what you're looking for, but that's the simple way is uh, commercial broker. They, they are more useful, in my opinion, than uh, residential brokers or agents. So Everybody's invested money in the commercial world for the most part. Whereas with residential, you may be, you may be the only one that's invested mind. Crystal's my homie. What you say? <laughs> she advertised. Do it, Crystal. <laughs> hey, that's my son. I need to make you an ad man in the uh, Facebook group. Hit me up. Hit me up. Text me, Crystal. I might get you an ad man because I ain't here don't. Well, I ain't in. I don't be in there a lot myself, so I can't blame. It, it's moving too fast. It, be, it moves too fast. You agree? I'm just going to say my feelings are hurt right now. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, we, we do need them, you know. So here, here's here's up, Chris, since you're here for more deal, lady. Do it. Okay. Well, okay. Homes for Sale on YouTube wants to know, is it a deal? 
It's a three bedroom, two bath, um, 15, 18 square feet. Uh, the after repair value is 125K. Woo! You get Gator of the Year Award. Price I asked was $20,000. Seller and the seller is considering it. Oh, wow. The yeah. Seller said it, they were yeah. Well, what, what are the repairs? Um, repairs, I estimate around at least 30, maybe 40, because the whole kitchen was burned up as well oh. as the living room. Oh, so, yeah, oh. that was a kink in 20, there. 20 may not be cheap enough. Oh, so that's Just the that's, kitchen, though. They said the, the living room is yeah. burned up and in the kitchen. Yeah, kitchen is part of the living room. Just okay. gut the whole thing, just make it open, have an open kitchen like they do on HGTV. Oh, 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 oh. It yeah. may gonna probably cost more than 40 or 50 to fix a burnout with that much damage. Oh. Okay, well, anyway, so repairs. I'm going to see the property tomorrow, but was told there is some oh, roof leaks, one oh. wall that needs to be replaced, and one bedroom is kind of soft, so I'm assuming it's rotten. That could easily be 70, 80 grand of repairs. I'm estimating around 10 to 15 repairs for the, oh, yeah, we already at 55. Okay, look, look. Seller asked for eight to ten. I looked over the property. Oh, this is a totally different one. He has another one where they only want eight to ten, and he looked over the property and offered two thousand. And they said they look, need a little more. So let's let's just focus on. Oh, whoa, whoa. and they said five thousand will work. Is this deal or way too tight? Rest of the homes in the area are eighty to a hundred k. Okay, so we got that home down to five. We got about fifty-five thousand in in repairs, but we still have a hundred. This is different property. I can't tell. I think it's two. I, oh. oh Lord, I can't tell. It, it's two. It, I think we're going to say it's two different deals. So focusing on the one that's almost a burnout, that's one twenty-five under contract for twenty with fifty-five. Fifty, we'll say fifty thousand in repairs. You send it 70 and you got 125, so you got 55 to play with. But hmm, it's a burnout. Pretty yeah, much. It's, that's tough, man. It's a burnout. This so this same deal or different deal. A to B. I, huh? Yeah. Okay. No. Um, and what are you getting for 20 or five? 20. 125? Mm-hmm. That, that may not be cheap enough. Okay. That may not be cheap enough. They already got the insurance money. Yeah, you forget about that. They already got. They already got their money. So, yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They already they already have their money. Now you can't. You know, people want to sell for what they want to sell for. Really, that probably needs to be around like five. You know, just for them to go on vacation or something. But uh, they they should have already gotten their money um, from that property. They they're trying to double dip. Emily, no. I'm just gonna tell you no. Emily Smith on YouTube, no, just say no. Say no. Just say no. No. Right. She wants to know is 20 too young to flip contracts? No. 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 Oh my you, you had the 17 year old dude that was here two yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, he yeah. never came back and yeah. said anything, but no. Yeah, you're way ahead of the game, baby girl. Yeah. Way ahead of the game. Most, most definitely. Don't. Mm -mm. Don't don't worry. Age ain't nothing but a number. Aaliyah said so. Quote in quote. Okay, guys. Can you? Oh, uh, here you go. You ready for this, Crystal? I'm gonna let you take over here. You did just go ahead and post about the flip man's videos, but Darren Johnson wants to know: Can you explain mail to flip and how it can help his business? Can you do that? Well, okay. thank you for that that cue. Uh, what is his name? His his name is Darren Johnson. That's Darren, my brother. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute, that's cheap. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Uh, hey, but mail to flip is it, simple, okay? That you just okay. As my man Gary B would say, he trades attention. All right, if you can get people's attention, you can sell anything. If you get enough people's attention, for the most part. All right. This is an attention getter. They get all types of mail if they're an absentee owner from investors trying to buy their properties. All right, so ideally what you wanna do is stand out from the competition. So you've taken the liberty to send them a postcard with a picture of 
the prop of their actual property to the owner. It's going to get their attention. And some of those owners, probably more than not probably more than normally, will call you uh, because you've taken the liberty to take a they, they actually probably think you physically went out there and took a picture of their property and put it on this postcard and or this letter. All right. So how it works is that you you, uh, you go to the site, mail the flip, go and register. And they have a calculator there so you can determine how much you want to mail, what type of mailer you want to send, have several different uh, templates. And you you first buy your list from list source from Melissa Data, one of those outfits, and you an absentee list, with absentees meaning they own the property but they don't live in it. You don't have one homestead in additional properties or consider an absentee. And the reason you target those is more likely they will be motivated to sell a house that they don't live in than the one that they do live in. Okay, so you upload that list and you pay for it and the people with AfterPix will take care of the rest. You don't have to worry about trying to upload any pictures or anything like that. You choose the mailer, upload your list, pay for it. And within a week or two weeks, depending on what type of mailer they send them out, you start receiving phone calls. That's how it works. That's how it works. Darren, thanks for that that build up, that plug and jump. And hopefully you guys got that now. Thanks for that softball. <laughs> Out the park. Wait, I, I missed but it. don't sleep on dig you later because you can create a list or use that same list that you did your direct mail, your mail to flip with, upload it to dig you later, import it in and append the phone numbers. And maybe you upload a thousand, you may get three to 400 phone numbers. So now you can just simply pick up the phone and say, hey, are you interested in selling your house at 123 Main Street? We pay all cash, close quickly. Before they hang up on you or get mad or they say, hey, yeah, let's do a deal. So boom, it's a numbers game. It's a crap, faster, quicker way of generating leads. Either their phone needs to be ringing and or your phone needs to be ringing on a daily basis. Okay. Um, Antoine Bay, I'm just going to call you out. If I just got started with wholesaling and haven't even did my first deal, would you recommend me jump starting my business and signing up for deal? You better. Where you been? Have you been here the whole time? Have you not heard anything that we've said? Have you not heard Crystal advertising on Facebook? I mean, dealyourlater.com. Sign up for it, Gator, guys. The, Gator of the Year Award. G yeah, she got it. Don't, I mean, I got it last year. No, I'm saying that's a good, that's a good award. That's yeah, a good Gator. Award. A Gator of the Year Award. Gator of the yeah. Year Award. Yeah, yeah. I got it last year. And you shit. get your own uh, Gator I ship to you. <laughs> gator, gator of the year award. Stipulation. Maybe we need to just Gator of the month. Oh yes, I like that Gator of the month. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gator of the month. How, how are we going? To, we got to think about it. We'll yeah, think about we'll, it. We'll think about that. But yes, yes, Antoine Bay, most definitely would be a good asset. Now, we, okay, guys, we started really late. We did. It was kind of my fault. Traffic was hellacious, but we're here and we did start. And we have been on for about an hour, so this is the time. It don't count when you started. It counts okay. when I got here. Oh, yeah, oh, that, that don't count. Okay. okay, so um, with you take this moment to make sure you know about deal you later. You can only drill that in you so many. Mail to flip. Yeah, um, and I've been sleeping on the podcast, and I need to get a couple of them up. But we're on iHeartRadio now, podcast. We're on iTunes also. You said we, and I'm on that too. Yeah, you. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. So we're we're on we're so. I've been sleeping on that. So to access it, obviously you can go to um, uh, iHeart and just do a search for a flipping house and put the flip man in there. Boom, I should come up. Uh, on iTunes, same thing. Spreaker, same thing. I think we're on SoundCloud also. Um, so don't sleep on the, on the podcast. Flipmanpodcast.com. We don't promote the group enough. And what I really don't promote enough is please, if you're on YouTube or if you're not on YouTube, because that's where most of my free content is, is on YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I appreciate everyone that already has. Uh, we're over 32,000 strong, approaching 33,000 subscribers right now. Uh, but it's all there in those videos. Uh, you know you can get the free one-page contract by going to flipman.net. Same contract that I've been using since 2003 to do deals. Uh, it stood the test of time. It's simple. Uh, it's not intimidating the sellers. Um, not sure what else to tell you on that, but um, yeah, don't forget dealulator.com, build your buyers, their vacant property, high equity properties, REOs, tax liens, tax liens. Uh, you can find seller phone numbers, the, the whole shebang, five day free trial. 
Dailylater.com. It's a play on the word calculator, but you get it. Dailylater.com. Adrian did a remarkable job. I wish I had a shirt like this. Maybe I could get one. It's but over she, there. But she has a did a remarkable job. That, that's better than last week. I know, I know, but you should see the other one looks really good. I just burned it up on the heat press. Like I went. Oh, it was better than that. Yeah, I forgot it. It just burned up. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. I do uh, this. So boom. Yeah. Okay. I covered everything, then. You did. You did. And I'm just going to read with Crystal. But make sure if you're watching this live tonight that you tune in every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern for our one hour question and hour question and answer section. And make sure that if you're subscribed, turn on your notifications so when Flipman goes live, you get the notification. That's right. I just read what she said. <laughs> so don't Let me see what else she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> what did the crystal say? Do I'm it, try, crystal. I'm trying to see what she said. I'll just read what she said. Uh, uh, hey, Darnell. Okay. You said this is your first time watching Flip. Yeah, Crystal got that covered. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Okay. She's killing it in there. Absolutely. Sharon had a question, though. I uh, will go around and try to read one question around about all class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Social media platform. Sharon's question. Yeah, but I'm was, ready to go watch Queen of the South. Watch that. No, what's that? Queen of the South. Anybody out there watch Queen of the oh, South? Oh, that's the um, drug lord lady, right? Yeah, and then shoot her right after that. Uh -huh. Those are two of my. Shows. I'm just talking about power. Power and cream sugar. That's um, it. That's the only queen. I right can't now. wait till Snowfall come back on. Um, you watch that? Oh man, oh, that's so good. Um, you know, you know, I just recently started. They canceled. That. They canceled. Um, what my show was, um, the Strange, the Strand. I'm sorry, the they canceled the, the Strange. Strain. The, the Strand. Strain. The Strand. Yeah. Strain. 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 With the vampires. The Strain. Okay. Yeah, they canceled that. I still got to watch that last episode. But go ahead. Let's read the question. All right, I got Sharon all question was, how do you check to see if a property has permitted add-ons for the home? Well, that's going to be the zoning board. Uh, what, 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 what does that have to do with your deal? If you could explain for it, Sharon. We may not have time for it, but. Okay. You, Sharon, just go ahead and link Salcedo. Have you ever considered doing a flipping seminar? We do a flipping webinar every week. We do a flipping webinar every week. Yeah, a flipping-ar. <laughs> flipping -ar. Seminar, webinar. And flip. All together. No, I think it and, means, and, like, seriously, and, like, I know, location. I know, and they produce a flipping -ar. Yeah. So I may do a live flipping -ar one day. See, what, guys, what you have to know about me, I'm a... Uh, <laughs> I'll be terrified standing in front of you guys. Ooh, look at the Shanita over there. So, so it, it, that is something very different. I've been asked to do it uh, locally and a couple other places. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's just tough for me to do that. I can do the talking. You can just give me the information and I'll do the talking. If that, if it was that easy, uh, I would do it. You know what I'm saying? Hold the hold up. If it was that easy, I'm just saying that people just would, you know, if I could you just, if I could just be sitting up there like this and somebody you do else that talking. Now. Okay, well, so, well, they good they cause they because they paid no money. This free. Oh, okay. <laughs> you better went to a I seminar, you expecting something else something. or you. whatever, you, you know. But cute um, no hat and everything. And then I got Crystal <laughs> and Shanita's coming through on the Facebook wholesale group to get a free copy of the one page contract Ty has used since 2003. Text contract to 313131. Boy, y'all come. Wait a minute. They trying to replace me. Well, you reading good. Oh, I do read good, yes. Okay, um, T.S. Young, repost your deal. It scrolled up. That will be my final question from the Facebook group. If you could post it really quick. Ooh, there's no R in quick. Really quick, I will read it. See, Crystal says she'll do it with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, she says, the home had an upper bonus room added on and a deck, but doesn't show it on any of the Google searches or MLS and an external shop. So she's saying the add-ons, would that not increase the value of the home? Because it's not, or was it done without permit? Is what she was wanting to know. Um, See, that's what you're gonna do with the seminar, huh? But see, everybody gonna be like throwing popcorn at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the thing is that that'll come out whenever um, an appraisal would be done, but, so you, but you have to treat it uh, what's showing on record because that's how uh, investors will evaluate. It'll just be a bonus. So you have to 
negotiate your deal based on uh, it. That's what I would do. Let me just say that because that's only going to work in your favor. But you're going to negotiate your deal based on what the square footage is showing and recorded. <clears throat> Okay, T.S. Young, thank you for actually posting that on YouTube where I can read it right here versus training to see it over there, but I'm going to read it right over there. I don't know, because my eyes just look good. 2030. 377,954,000 is still owed plus, I don't know, let me read it over here. Still owed plus 75,000 owner take plus 50,000 in repairs plus 30,000 fee. The ARV minimum is 820. So we'll just say 1 million, worth the time or no. And the minimum profit for the investor is 286,000. Um, 50,000 repairs is a high guess. Chances are no repairs are needed, uh, but you haven't walked through the property yet. And it is a, uh, as owner is in, owner is fight foreclosure, probably fighting foreclosure. So what do you think there? All right, what were the numbers? Okay. 377,954 is what's still owed. 75,000 is what the owner wants to walk away with. Possibly 50,000 in repairs. And his fee will be 30. The ARV minimum is 820 to a million. So let's throw it somewhere in between. And uh, he wants to know, is it worth the time or no with the minimum profit for the investor being roughly 285,000? So what do you think of the numbers? That's why we can't have no cinema because I got to read it again. I think that, yes, you don't have I mean, because the numbers, honestly, so what's the those big what's deals the, like that, I, mean, I, I, I got it. What's the, what's the, what's the One million. What the, can it get it for? 377,954. That's what's old on it. Say 380. So you can get it for that? Yeah, but the owner wants to walk away with 75,000. Yes. So that's for something. Yes, fifty thousand in repairs, maybe. What are we talking about here? They, they only six hundred thousand in. That's a deal. Okay, that's what you wanted to know. That's a deal. Yeah. Okay, Miss Young. You're almost at fifty percent with everything. The is. problem is they're fighting foreclosure, so you you're going up against. It don't matter. Doesn't matter how. Yeah. Okay. If, if he can get it for basically three eighty, uh, I'm sorry, uh, three three eighty. Well, he had his seventy. He said one seventy five thousand. Okay, so, so we'll from, say for four sixty, yeah. basically, mm -hmm. and yeah, if you can get that a million dollar property for four sixty or fifty thousand in repairs, yeah, you can find a buyer that can. What what city is this in? Where are you at, Young Miss Young Miss Young? Where are you, where are you? Mm -hmm. And other than that, it sounds like you have a good deal. Um, thank you. Somebody, Ron, wants to know where do you get your bandit signs? Dirt cheap signs. We haven't really spoke about that, but call. Do not go online. Call. Ask to speak to Christina, Mitchin, Ty, Flipman, and Taylor, and you will save 5% off of your order. Um, if that helps anyone, dirtcheapsigns.com. And Darnell said he loved the banner in the background. Where could he get that? Where, where, would, he, where would he get something like that from? What? A banner, like the one you have back here, like that guy. Oh, oh, that's just a backdrop. Any any uh, sign shop can, can do that for you. Actually, Darnell, if you message me, Adrian Lavender, I can hook you up. Oh, yeah, Adrian does printing. Yeah, hit, hit her up on Facebook. Yeah, I can't get a plug on nothing. You're talking about that gator all the time, though. Okay, Miss Young is in the Los Angeles. She does all the shirts. I just come up with the designs <laughs> and the names. He's in California. All right, Let's see See. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and round. Oh, let me see here. About to get started with low, low bad credit, very little capital. You don't need any capital. Wholesaling with little to no cash for whoever posted that on Instagram, if you're regarding you're talking in regards to wholesaling, little to no cash. And someone wants to know, was there a video in regards to... <laughs> How to find a title company? Um. Oh well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually. Uh, do you have a buyer and seller in place? If you don't have a buyer and seller in place, you shouldn't be worried about that, in my opinion, because a lot of times your buyer would dictate where the where the deal is being closed. Now, if it's a situation you have a buyer and seller in place, and the buyer maybe that first transaction or whatever, then I understand. Now it's time to look for a title company. It just you can reach out to your real groups to see who uh, closes for investors uh, within your area uh, 
been within the area. Uh, you can ask other wholesalers. You can just call them and ask them. You know, people that you see that we buy houses, signs, or people that advertise online. Let's see who closes closes for them. So, but other again, you need to have a buyer. You need to have a deal in place, in my opinion. Just to call and talk to them, not necessary. Not necessary, in my opinion. Okay. Off roader says snowfall is the junk. Kathy R says better call saw coming back on August sixth. And Jarrell, no, Tammy C says you guys need to have a TV show. You are something else, just too funny. I know, I'm hilarious. I can be a comedian. Yes. Adrian with the mess, a playoff just with the mess. Mm -hmm. I can do it. <sighs> Cell phones, yes, the greatest invention in the last couple of centuries, but also okay. the most distracting <laughs> thing it, 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 ever. It, it, it's great, but combined with the internet, what makes it great. Makes it wonderful. The, the internet is actually a better invention. The mobile phone takes it to a whole nother level, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Smartphone, mm -hmm. not just a mobile phone, not just uh, but a smartphone. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I hate to see where it's going to go in the next five to mm -hmm. 10 years. Last question. Last question is going to be, does wholesaling work if the seller has a real estate agent? I think we've actually touched on that about three, four times. So why did you ask it? Because I can answer it. No, Just wait, keep wait, it get, get a better question. We didn't answer that. You can go back maybe about, we already answered. I answered that in detail. Okay, so this video will be available as soon as we close out this evening. You can go back on YouTube and watch it. Just scroll back towards maybe the first 10, 15 minutes after Ty is solo and actually come on set. He does answer that question. I do apologize for that, Ms. Johnson, but we did answer that. You will get a better, he did actually go into detail. He just yeah. don't want me answering right now. Just acting funny. Okay. Um, have you ever had a buyer give you a problem at closing once they found out your assignment fee? And... Your next question. Atlanta has a lot of neighborhoods that have a tons of abandoned homes. Is this potential or a waste of time? You know what? Listen, listen, seriously. I don't know if y'all ever think about this. So I ride through, just say, the war zone, the D area of my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And uh, not my neighborhood. I live in the C zone. Thank you very much. Actually, B minus. Okay. So, but anyway, say the D zone. And you see maybe six abandoned houses. And then there's one or two where probably grandma, grandpas live, maybe section eights or whatever. So what, what if you found somebody that you said, hey, I can get these six houses that are totally vacant for nothing. Eventually something will come here. Something will. People don't think, investors don't think like that. Like let's go well, and buy the, all the, these abandoned well, houses that you can get for two grand, two, the, three grand. The, the first problem is you're not going to be able to get them all. You got six different owners in most cases. Some of them ain't gonna want to sell. Some of them are gonna want to sell at a price that doesn't make doesn't make any sense for the condition and where it's located. Mm -hmm. And then there are those that do want to sell out of six. Okay, so you may get one or two of them that sell that makes sense for you. So those other four still eyesores for whatever reason. So that that's that's the biggest issue. Now it's done. People do it all the time because they'll take a whole block and just I'm saying just wipe but, the whole but, block. But but you know that. You got to have a real plan. But for what we're talking about, it's a little bit more difficult. And But you just have to have the right, again, it goes back to having the right type of buyers, you know, for something like that. They got to have some real vision, you know, be able to take a block like that and redo it. But normally you're going to do more than that block because normally blocks like that are budding up against each other or whatever. So. Yeah, because it's just one. I'm like, man, if somebody just bought all this whole little roll of houses and just gunned it and put a couple of little better looking brick duplexes. Mm. They can make some money. They don't take long to throw that up. So she wants to know, is that a waste of time? Those type of houses in Atlanta. I, I personally, when you got that many vacant houses uh, on the street six, on a block, normally that's that's difficult. That makes it difficult, normally. Okay. And that, and you, unless you spot some transactions going on, you see some renovations going on on streets like that. Okay, whatever, let's but, use a neighborhood here locally, the neighborhood over by that hospital that people don't want signs up anymore. Those houses are run down, but they don't want anybody coming in there because it's is that care Oh well, like, no, that's that's coming. That's I just, right. I that's what I'm saying. It's booming though. Yeah, but that just happened because they probably about to build a, a stadium down there. That's why I don't. Yeah, that's, but five years ago you could have went through there and got all but, the but, little but, trap but, row but, houses. But but hey, if, if I can predict the future like that, we probably wouldn't even be on this bus now. I'd be a billionaire. 
But I'm telling you now that them $6 is going to be the you know, I, mean, I can show you neighborhoods that have been in that situation longer than that and 10 years now, they're still being that. You, you can't, if you can predict that kind of stuff, we're talking a whole nother ball game. How long have they been planning this thing? That's been in the work. That hasn't so been in the works for years. That's it, 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 it ain't that's really been. ever been in work. They've just been talking about it. It's still really talk. But the point is, if you can predict that, you, you ain't getting it. If you can predict that, we talking a whole nother ball game. What click y'all with? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I can show you some neighborhoods that, that, that since I've been in Birmingham, they, and that's been 20 North since Birmingham 19 September and uh, September uh, 11 of 1990. They look the same. That's almost 20 uh, 28 years. Mm -hmm. So so you gonna sit down in 28 years? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. If you could predict that kind of stuff. And sometimes you can see trends that's easy to see, but what we're talking about, that's a whole nother ball game if you can predict that kind of stuff. Okay. Well. Okay, and the other question was... I guess wholesale went over there because it is hot, but it got to do let me know it was hot or whatever. I didn't know it until I talked to this particular investor. Mm -hmm. He said, we'll buy anything up over there, and they did. I got one of them, and they did. Okay, last question. People, uh, y'all make it more complicated, but a lot of people seem to be worried about. Can you please answer? Okay. Really, last one about your check when you get the closing, and keeping the buyer and or the seller from knowing what you're making, and how many times has it ruined a deal for you? And girlish question was when driving for dollars. What am I looking for? I went D for D this past weekend and didn't find a lot of vacant homes. Should I skip houses with lock boxes? Um, what well, are you looking for when you're driving for dollars? What am I writing down? Growing uh, up yards. Yeah, you're looking for obvious properties that may seem distressed just from the, just from your, you know, just eyeballing them. Um, you you also want to, in my opinion, you also want to write for sale by owner signs down numbers down. Uh, for rent signs down, when I say for rent, the ones that appear to be generic signs that they may have bought from Walmart, Lowe's or Home Depot or red, black and white signs. So normally you may be able to talk to the actual landlord and hopefully you run into a tired landlord. But not just only vacant properties, but you want to do the for sale by owners and target the uh, generic uh, for rent signs also to hopefully run into a tired landlord. Okay. And the question about the money at the end. What, what about the money? When you're at the closing table, keeping the buyer and the seller from knowing how much money they're being nosy. Um, I personally don't care. That's going to be a preference thing. Okay. I never hide it, you know, so that's going to be a preference thing. Okay. Lisa Cranford with Bye Bye Birmingham. You got your first deal. Mother and daughter duo wants to thank you for all the free resources. Profits will go I to you Birmingham? later. Yes. Okay. Because you texted me when I had a question. See, guys, he is available. 270 plus videos are available to you on YouTube. Hey, I'm a, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't say it like that. You, you are? No, 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 no. You're, the videos, the, the flipping ours every week, the 270, okay, okay, you okay, get okay. so much free content. Okay, okay. I'm not saying that you're available like your numbers out there just call them up. Well, it videos. is, but I'm just saying. I'm, I know. You know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you don't mind answering the question. No, I, I do it all videos. the time. Yeah. yeah I just, but... I just like, you know, when people contact me or whatever. Um, you know, I, I try to be nice, but I have screwed up days sometimes because you know I have stuff beyond this relationships, women, all that kind of stuff. What? Or whatever. So, so you know, one, one. Yeah. And I was so, say, uh, don't say women. But, but anyway, so um, um, you know, so I may have be having a bad day or whatever, and um. Um, Ain't nobody but, gonna be texting him all night. But, <laughs> but ideally, I'll answer a question. But I'm, I'm normally gonna refer you to my videos and or the Facebook group, especially if I know you hadn't watched a lot of my videos. And I can tell by the question or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I I put my number out there because I do want people to contact me. But I just want to understand that all the information is really there in the video. Take advantage of the free videos is what I try to stress to people because. Those videos are answered better now because, because they just go into so much detail or whatever. And just depending on what I'm involved in right at that point, it's just hard for me to, to answer your question. So I refer you back to, you know, the content that you can just dive into. Um, 
over and over again until you get it. Okay, guys, I hope tonight was informational for you. Appreciate you being here. Sorry I was late. It was my fault. It was the traffic. Mm -hmm. They repaved my highway like 459 all the way, whatever. We will see you next week. I hope you all had a wonderful 4th of July yesterday. It was Renikia's birthday this weekend. So when you do see her again, tell her happy belated birthday. Um, Mike Phil's birthday is tomorrow. So I have to go get ready for festivities and stuff. Your birthday tomorrow? You know my birthday is in November. Oh, I'm hurt. Man, you've been hurt. You don't know, you don't know July 31st. Why you put that? So everybody <laughs> can take me. Why do you challenge me? <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you just challenge me? Wow, you just challenged me. Golly. Oh. I, don't, I don't need to ask you no question. I'm ready to get an answer, huh? Unless you're ready to get an answer, don't okay. get, yeah. This is something that just ain't gonna Okay, guys, we're gonna close out tonight. Don't forget about the free videos, the contract, deal you later, mail to flip, fundmynextdeal.com. We have plenty of things. Tag a friend, bring a friend next week. Crystal is gonna close us out by making sure she posts, and Shanita in our Facebook group as well is gonna post how to get in contact, not with Ty, but with the group. And if you have any questions, and if you just so need to have someone hold your hand, Ty does offer a coaching course, um, but it ain't free, y'all. Nobody's free. He gives you enough free content to get you on your way, but if you still need to have your hand held, uh, I can do that for you, but I'm going to let him do it just in case. And we're going to work on that seminar. We will see you guys next week. Thank you all for joining. I love you guys. And you like my shirt? Mm -hmm. oh, do you like it? It's banging. I know. You do the what's up after this. You know, Bye, guys. See you on the flip side. Thank you, Veronica. Yeah, I can get it and then get stuck. Oh, wow. Let me go get my kids up there. They in the car? Yep, yeah, they probably did. Man, get out of here. Why can't you come? Thank you for listening in. I'm probably on the whole time. I'm just sitting right here Yeah, boy.